Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about the cultural conflicts in merger. So to make it simple, the first thing we have to distinguish is what is merger to an acquisition. An acquisition is actually a takeover of another company and a simulation of other company under your own banner. So that you can see there's only one winner under this deal. Whereas merger, you have a win-win solution. Two companies will emerge victorious here. So the most uh, misconception in today's deals of merger, you can see the term merger of equals. It's actually a facade to cover up for a bad and unfriendly deal, a takeover. And the results show that more than 70% produce negative, if not neutral, outcomes. So to step it up, you can check the graphs here. For AOL and the Time Warner merger, just months after the merger was announced, the stock prices all plummeted down. And in the course of a few years, it dropped to a whopping 91%. Whereas for Daimler and Chrysler, you can see the starting point and the end point is actually the same. And the merger actually reverted, back, reverted them back to the starting point. So to get into the main point, the main factors that contribute to why merger fail is the failing in merger of company cultures. The first one is conflict in national culture. The imbalance of Uncertainty avoidance in Daimler Chrysler is actually very obvious. Daimler is a German company that practices a top-down management. They apply very theoretical solutions. As opposed to their American counterparts, they use a trial and error method to approach their operations and management styles. The second one is about human resource operations. For AOL, a small company, they use top-down management, so they have very fast decision-making. Whereas the Time Warner was an established company, a very giant company. They have multiple units, but each of that unit is self-governed. So when the AOL take over, they actually take the lead and apply their own management style towards the bigger company, which causes a conflict in the human resource operations. And third and last one, it's about product distributions in Quaker Oats. Prior to this merger, they actually made a sports drink company called Gatorade very successful. So they think maybe they can use this framework and apply it to Snapple, but they don't realize that Snapple has already established a niche market. They use like gas stations, convenience stores, as opposed to Quaker Oats, they sell all their products like supermarkets, giant Tesco's. So that has a conflict in their product market distribution. So to mitigate all these conflicts, you have to understand that merger is actually a matrimony. You start with dating process, identification, you discern the strengths and weakness of each individual, you put them together, you check the compatibility, then only you move on to marriage, which is the merger. For the fruition type, the ending is your, your fruit of the labor. You can see increased revenue, decreased production cost, that is what we are looking for in a merger. So I divide it into two sections, which is pre-merger and post-merger. For this part, you can set up employee welfare, just like what Disney and Pixar did. For Daimler and Chrysler, an American uh, manager was sent over to Germany, but in the end, his salary was twice as much of his new supervisor, which doesn't really make sense. Next one is about AOL and Time Warner. They are stripped of their healthy profit sharing programs. They have to relocate their offices, which is not very convenient for their employees. Disney Pixar um, employ this um, welfare very well because the employees can just remain at their own usual office. They don't, don't need to share any, they don't need to sign any employment contract and they retain their old employee benefits, they even upgrade it. The next one is about worker exchanges and collaborative projects. Disney was a monolithic giant in children's entertainment, whereas Pixar excels in CG films. As you can see, Finding Nemo and Toy Story is actually before the merger was produced. I'm sure everyone has seen this movie before. So because they have these projects before the merger, they know that they can work hand in hand. They both fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. That's why the merger was successful for them. For the post-merger time, you can see the pace of integration is very impor important because it has to be filmmaker-led instead of executive-led like what we see in Disney Pixar. So you have to utilize the proper expertise, let the experts do their job instead of your bosses telling you what to do. This also includes perpetual communication because you have to keep understanding what is going on, like cross-organization project, your employees have to work together to see the outcomes, whether it's good or bad. So 
in short, you have to have a clear purpose, leadership, and blueprint. Okay, stop. So you all must learn uh, to present like this. Uh, Mun Tai, I, I think you're very quiet throughout uh, the semester, but you know, you were able to produce this type of presentation. His voice is good, um, he's able to capture my attention. Uh, I've only probably lost one or two of his slides because I was writing some stuff, but other than that, I like your bigger words and the other one, the staple, uh, which is quite good. Uh, the others are also very, very good. I like your mitigation, pre, post, merger, and your social mitigation model. Uh, uh, wait for that. Can, can, can you turn back to your slides where you went for the mitigation? Uh, it's on dating, marriage, children, fruition. Okay, this is quite good. So merger equals to matrimony. I like this as well. All right, a lot. I, I like your point where, can, can you, can you go? Yeah, not this one. This one, Finding Nemo, yeah. Toy Story. It, this, Finding Nemo and Toy Story is a short project that they, uh, Disney and Pixar actually did just to test the possibility of merger, isn't it? Yes. Uh, this is very good. Uh, I like this one. You get very, very high marks for this one. I actually, um, the only thing probably pull you down is your dressing. Um, because you, you wore the jeans. Um, the, the others are very good. In fact, I'm increasing your marks here with quality of content. I'll probably give you a 19 out of 20. It's really good. Now, you all see how a good presentation is? He, he doesn't have to shout. But his pointers are really good. Voice are loud. What? Voice are clear. Your voice is very clear, isn't it? Mm. It's very confident. All right, very good. I'm not going to ask any questions. Uh, okay, this one question. <laughs> uh, what do you think is the mistake in Proton and Guinea mergers? I think Malaysia, Malaysia side Proton is not really ready to accept uh, Gili's uh, in intervention. Just like Mars Airlines ordered the German CEO, they cut. Maybe they will implement very risky decision, very drastic decision. Oh, I was hoping that you, you would, you were saying this. Okay, one of the main problem is they shouldn't merge that fast. They should actually be like, they should actually try like uh, Disney and Pixar, right? They should come up with a with a joint venture, but you know, a joint model. Then after that, they, they go for a merger, a full merger. I think I think they should use the same model that they did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, quite good, very good actually. Okay, thank you very much, very entertaining.